All right. Hey, people. It's Kelly of Print, Pray, Slay, and I am here with uh, my patrons, and we have a new video where we're going to be studying using the Fearless Kit. Um, I already cut it up, but it's a kit about having a fearless mindset and heart towards what's going on in life and how God has you and how you have no reason to have fear um, because, again, you're setting a lot of your faith in God, or well, all of your faith in God. So we have different scriptures that we're going to go through. There is Mark 5.36. There is Psalms 34.3. I mean, 34.4, I'm sorry. And then Joshua 1.9. And then Exodus 14.13. So um, I picked a few. Um, well, I picked all four <laughs> because I'm in the kit. But um, I'm going to touch on two, and then other people are going to chime in. I'm hoping that you can hear them, um, but they're going to be able to speak towards the whole other um, scriptures that's going on in the kit. So for right now, I'm going to do, I think I'm in Exodus, and the scripture in Exodus is 14, 13. So I'm going to grab my study Bible. One second. This is the doll that's in the kit. She in the... She in the way right now. Um, 14, 13. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where's 13? Okay. So it's, it's honestly, it's simply put. It says, but Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. And then 14, just because we were right there. It says the Lord himself will fight for you just stay calm. Um, and that's something that, I mean, I guess we can say that and it's nice to read and hear, but it, it, it's basically causing us to have a lot of action. Um, and in our midst of having fear, it is really hard to stay calm. I've been, I mean, I'm sure everybody has been in a situation, um, where they're fearful and that is probably the first thing that you want to do is stay calm and believe and have faith, but your natural reflexes are to react. Um, but when we do that, we really take, um, a, a piece away from the power that we are supposed to put in God and allow him to work in our lives. So if we act on our own, um, I'm not saying that you're destined to fail, but things are not going to turn out the way that they were supposed to when you are led by God being led by fear is, is not going to lead you in the right direction. Um, in my study Bible, let me see if there's a note for study Bible. Okay, so the study Bible is talking about 13 and 14. Oh, thank goodness I read both. Um, it says, the people were hostile and despairing, but Moses encouraged them to watch the wonderful way God would rescue them. Moses had a positive attitude. When it looked as if they were trapped, Moses called upon God to intervene. We may not be chased by an army, but we may still be. we may still feel trapped. So instead of giving our despair, um, giving into our despair, um, we should adapt Moses' attitude and stand still and watch the Lord rescue us. So they were running from a whole army and he's saying, don't look at them, you know, don't look at Pharaoh and all of the warriors and everybody that's coming after us. Let's just keep our eyes focused on God and what he has for us to, to go and being led by him again. We have sometimes an invisible situation that we're dealing with. You know, you know, you're wondering, will my paycheck come? Will it be on time? Will I be able to do this? Uh, these people had like people that were trying to kill them after them. Um, and not that our situation is not hard, but I couldn't imagine having that standing physical in your face fear um, and trying to uh, really stand firm and know that, you know, God is, at any moment, <laughs> God is going to come here in this situation and, and save us. So it's nice to have, um, a Moses like in your life. Also, like if you have a friend that when you have a hard time, you can call them and they're not going to say, well, you want me at the bar? Like we can just drink this way or, uh, let's go do this, that, and the other kind of leaning on outside sources to kind of help you get through what you're afraid of instead of facing it, knowing that God is going to take you through. You want a friend like Moses. You want somebody that if you're not that person for yourself, you want to have people around you that can tell, you know, have a positive attitude and, you know, uh, pay attention, tell you what scriptures to read. Um, that would be very, very helpful because you're going to have these moments. You are going to be faced with things that you are uncertain with and that you're fearful of. And it's just how you handle that fear that's really going to carry you through. 
Um, so that's what I got out of Exodus. Um, I'm going to stop talking so that y'all can possibly hear, hopefully <laughs> hear um, uh, a patron talk. I think um, Miss Statton, would you like to do Deuteronomy now or um, are you ready? Okay, hold on one second. Let me make sure everything is loud and proud so people can hear. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm ready. Yes, this is Deuteronomy 31 and verses 6. And it says, So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. And what we're talking about in the scripture, Moses is telling Joshua that he's 120 years old and he's no longer going to be able to leave them. So Joshua is going to have to take over. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is told, giving him instructions what to tell Joshua to not be afraid. Don't worry, because the Lord is with them. He's going to go ahead of them, and he's going to take care of them, and they don't need to be afraid. Okay. And now, you... I relate that to today's time. The things that are going on in the world right now, uh, COVID is the enemy. Mm -hmm. It's Definitely. attacking people. It's coming after people all ages, all circumstances. doesn't matter how much money you have, what race you are, your age. But the Lord is going to take us through this. He has a plan, and all we have to do is trust in him, be courageous, and just put our faith in the Lord. And I feel that things will work out for us. If you read the word, follow the word, you'll make it through. Well, thank you. Amen to that. Cause that is, that is definitely our situation. And that's something that everybody has in common. And I think that that's interesting that sometimes we isolate our fears and say, well, that's y'all problem. I got this problem over here. COVID, they don't have nobody <laughs> name on it. Like it's coming, like it's, it's here for everybody. And I think that that's interesting that we hopefully are pulling together to have that understanding that we, it's like when people have a common enemy, they then focused on that and stop bickering and, and fighting each other. So, you know, maybe a lot of unity might come out of having, you know, this thing that we're trying to stay alive and, and bond with each other and make sure we all survive off of. Um, but that is, I, I like how you tied it into real time. Like that is, that is definitely our situation right now. And it's real. I don't think any of us thought of 2020 in this way. Like this is just, I thought it was going to be two weeks. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> they, that's what they said, two weeks. And we were all going to be back to quote unquote normal. Um, and that just really has not happened yet. Um, so I'm hoping that a lot of people have turned to God from, you know, having experienced so much turmoil from COVID like that is, it's a real situation. So thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, and we have, we actually have two Brenda's. <laughs> so if, if Miss Lee, are you ready to share yours? Yes, I am ready. And I hope that everyone can hear me. Thank um, you. I am reading Joshua, uh, chapter one, verse nine. Um, and I'm going to read from the King James version and it says, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Um, and this is one of my favorite scripture. I've used this uh, many times. I've, I've given this to my children to use when they are um, faced with challenging times. And you can see God spoke to um, Joshua about this after the death of Moses. Like uh, Brenda went before me, she talked about how Moses was uh, um, telling Joshua that he was going to lead the people, and now Moses has gone on, and um, and now Joshua has to get that courage to lead the people. And God is giving him that. He's telling him that you will have all the land that um, stands before you; that it's yours. And, and that's what he's told us. He said, as people of God, as believers, our uh, faith uh, in him, 
that we have the victory. We already have that. And we just have to continue to believe. And so reading a scripture like this in Joshua, uh, where God is telling us to be strong and to be courageous um, and um, don't be afraid because he's with us in everything. And even, and Brenda, I was going to say the same thing, even right now in this day with the coronavirus and Kelly, you're right. Uh, we thought it was going to be a short lived thing, but this thing is going on and on and on. And many people are, are dying and family members are dying. Um, but we have to hold on um, to see what the end is going to be. Right. And it could be that more people will become saved because they will realize that God is in control, that not, not mm -hmm. man, but God is in control. And um, and so I think that this scripture, Joshua 1 and 9, is one that we can hold on to in this time that we're and, and as people have said, it's such a time as this that we find ourselves in, because God is in control, even though it seems like things are out of control. It seems like with the government and, you know, the virus and the race riots and, you um, the uh, prejudice and, and, and discrimination that's happening in our earth like this, it just seems like total unrest. But I know that we serve a God that is in control and that he will fix it and he will make it, make it right. And so as we um, encourage one another through, through um, avenues like this and keep our um, hearts and minds in the scripture, we too will be continue to be victorious in him. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that, Brenda. I knew that was uh, something that you were passionate about. I didn't even get through the whole scripture, y'all. When I said, uh, she, Brenda asked, like, oh, well, what scriptures? And I was naming them. And I got like three words into the scripture. She said, that's it. I'm going I'm to do that one. <laughs> so she's very truthful when she said that that was the one that she really uh, gravitated towards. And it's one that I feel like you can repeat aloud over and over and being strong and courageous and if you like you have to definitely believe that like i don't i don't know how we can get through if we don't believe what we are reading and what we are saying to each other so i really appreciate that as you read it with such passion like you sound like you were really really um passionate about that scripture so i really appreciate that um thank you so much <laughs> you're welcome we need them yes yes definitely I don't know any, I don't know how, I don't know how, <laughs> like there's, there is no way I can continue on without it. I don't, I mean, I don't, mm, I don't know, but, um, some people hopefully like we had discussed just now, will will come to and really realize that, um, Jesus is King and that the faith that we need to go forth is necessary. Like it's not a, it's not a game as we talked before about being ready, um, in our last video and that's real. So, um, I think, uh, did anybody else have a scripture they wanted to share? I didn't want to, um, leave anybody out before we got to, uh, talking about the, the other portions. There are one, two, there are two more scriptures. Um, but again, no pressure. <laughs> I can, I can simply read, especially Mark. Mark is like plainly put, if you go to Mark five thirty six. It is just, it is what it is. Don't be afraid, just believe. Plain and simple. Again, something that you you can say over and over just to yourself. Um, and again, I'm saying saying it over and over because the more that you hear something, the more you believe it. Um, that has been something that psychologists have said over and over. Like if you keep telling yourself these positive things and saying that I can get through this, I don't need to be afraid, I just need to believe, um, I can do this, then you yourself will start to believe it. And that's what we need. You can't sit there and keep saying, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I can't do this. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Um, you need to follow up with some positivity and these scriptures hopefully will help. Um, I definitely believe that you should fight that fear with something that's real, like, um, your scripture, <laughs> your word, um, is the way that you can get through. So that's what Mark 5, 36 says. And I had Psalms. I, that was the second scripture that I was going to um, think about going into. Let me see. Let me go to Psalms real quick. Um, where is it? 34, 4. I think that's what this pink ribbon is in here for. Yep. So it said, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Um 
that's speaking to me that you have to open your mouth. Like you cannot, um, not ask. And it does not mean, I don't want people to think that, you know, everything you ask is going to come in two. It's going to definitely come based on God's will. Um, but you have to do your part. And a part of your part is reading God's word, understanding it, and really trying to, you know, embed it into your heart, but also speaking to God, like prayers are that that's a conversation with God. Um, if you're not talking to him and letting him know, you know, what you are fearful of, um, that's you trying to do it on your own. And I'm not saying that you, you can't survive and get through, but that's definitely the harder way to go. Um, why not reach out to your father and tell him what is going on with you and what's wrong, um, so that you can either be directed to the scriptures that can help be led to another person or service or organization that can help, um, or just listening to his voice and his word that can help. So, um, that's what I got out of Psalm 34, four, um, which is, you know, speak to him, you know, I'm, I'm seeking you. I want to hear from you in order to hear from somebody. You have to be quiet enough to listen. <laughs> so you can't just have your own, I'm going to ask God, but I'm going to still do what I want to do. I'm going to ask God, but I'm not really trying to hear what he has to say. Um, so that's what I got out of that one. And above, um, that I would just say, um, really knowing who your real enemy is, um, can really help. You can't really defeat something if you don't acknowledge and understand what you're going up against. So, um, pinpointing where that fear is coming from, like I'm talking about like anxiety, fear, or, um, um, this, I'm, I'm not going to name all of them. I think anxiety pretty much shoots across the board for everybody, <laughs> but of course there's different kind of fears, but knowing what that is and then tackling it. Um, but then also in the kit, there are inspirational, um, kind of fun type word, uh, phrases to kind of get you. Um, to think about fear in a different way. This is definitely a Halloween-ish type um, themed kit, uh, but it's going off of instead of celebrating fear, which is what a lot of people do around this time, it's really about um, celebrating how fearless you can be and you need to be. So there's a big, bold, fearless. I didn't print um, the other part of the kit out, um, but... There's, um, without God, I'm hopeless, but with God, I'm fearless. Um, my favorite is it was a dark and spooky night, but God, I think I post that every Halloween, every Halloween. I post that quote. Um, I think I got it out of my, just because, um, or because Jesus, yeah, it says because Jesus, that's a little book that I have from the grocery store. And I got that quote out of there and I like it because a lot of stories when we were kids start off with. It was a dark and spooky night, <laughs> um, but I like that this one adds, but God, meaning like it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter how spooky or how scary the night is um, because God is above all. The other one um, says Halloween, Halloween. I remember uh, going to church and they're having a Halloween. <laughs> uh, that that was a different experience. I was a, a young little kid. That was really fun. Um, fear no one but God. He's alive. The ultimate treat is Jesus and chocolate. I had to throw that in there. Uh, some people may say coffee. I'm not about that coffee life. I'm about that chocolate life. Um, and let your faith be bigger than your fear. Celebrate fun, not fear. Be strong, be brave, be fearless. And then speaking of fearless, of course, that's the name of the kit. But I have this coloring page. And this is what I'm going to do since I've already done my journaling. Well, I've already stuck my stickers down. Um, I'm going to be doing the... Uh, my journaling on this side and I'm going to color this while we discuss, um, how we feel about Halloween, um, offline. So if you want to join, um, of course you can't join at this moment cause this is what this is going on. <laughs> but if you ever want to join, um, my Patreon link is below. Um, and we, we have a lot of fun over there. So I'm about to go so that we can um, have our own discussion that's private and talk about um, the rest of the kit, the things that we have gone through possibly to get over fear and um, just our plans next weekend. So thank you all. I really appreciate you for tuning in. Um, talk to you later. Hey, bye-bye.